love and respect thanks for uh, tuning in once again appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the videos we have another quick video today these smaller videos are usually things i find that i want to show right away while i'm working on other presentations that are much longer and take more time i like to drop these little videos here so we can keep the information coming out and stay productive and so we can just get the truth out more and more for all of you who like the longer videos don't worry i have many coming I'm going to be talking about Chief Osceola today. Yeah, Chief Osceola. As it says here, seizure of Osceola. All right, real quick, I want to show you guys. I'm not the one who colorized this or drew it or blackwashed it, as people think. <laughs> I found this online. Uh, right now, I'm at the fineartamerica.com website, as you guys can see. It was by Granger, Osceola, 1804-1838. As you guys can see, they depicted him very swarthy. Seizure of Osceola. There's another image in black and white uh, in Pinterest. All right, so you guys can see I didn't just make this image up. Today we're going to read from uh, Harper's Weekly Magazine, a publication that was out for many, many years. A lot of good info in these articles. And today we're going to show an example of that with Osceola. So we're going to get into uh, Harper's Weekly from 1858, June 12th, 1858 to be exact. This book actually has all the weeks of 1858 in one place. I just want to be able to explain how hard it was to find this. I didn't give up. You know, I was I almost did. But I've seen the quote for what I'm going to read today and a lot of uh, images people create. But nobody has ever shown me the actual source. I just wanted to verify. So I looked for it and it wasn't easy, guys. I mean, there's so many uh, Harper's Magazine, uh, different versions of it, as you guys can see here. I kind of went one by one. I searched for Osceola, didn't get nothing. I went to the next one, same thing. As you guys can see all the tabs on the top, I looked in here, June to November, 1858. I didn't find it. I kept looking. I went to archive.org and they pretty much have almost all of them, but you have to kind of take your time to actually find the week you actually need and the year. There's so many publications of this. It's not easy, guys. So again, I went one by one. I searched for Osceola, right? I didn't get anything, right? All these different tabs um, I'm clicking on, you guys can see I searched for Osceola. All of these are from 1858 and I couldn't find it, as you guys can see. And I searched for Osceola, nothing was coming up. And then I found this one. I wanna show you guys something very interesting, right? So just like the other uh, publications and books on archive.org, usually, you can search for words and books by just uh, typing it right here and hitting search. As you guys can see, what I found out is that in this specific uh, journal article, they didn't allow for it to be text searchable. Out of all the articles that I went through, they all worked, right? This is the only one that wouldn't let me search for Osceola. So I had to dig in it, guys. I had to read and go through it until I found the actual article. So again, this is from June 12th, 1858, Harper's Weekly. And as you guys can see, they have an image of Billy Bowlegs or William Bowlegs in this article. So before we begin, I actually wanted to go through some images. If you're new to my channel, we've shown a lot of images of Seminoles uh, from the late 1800s and early 1900s and modern day ones too. Here's one right here. 
These are Seminole Indians. A lot of you have probably seen this uh, image on the internet. And I found this uh, looking for uh, Osceola's image on the internet. So when you search for Osceola, you'll probably get this image whitewashed. So I was able to find this one. I didn't do this, guys. This is how I found it. All right, so we got a seminal boy here and girl on the right, just so you guys can see. All right, and then some other Indians here. I'm going to just show you some of my collection here from my colorized uh, American Indian photos. We got George Osceola, his wife, the Everglades, Florida, 1910. It says here, Seminole Men, Las Mortas Creek Village, 1890. All right, so take a good look, right? So-called black. Here on the right, we have Seminole Girls and Charlie Tommy in a canoe in the Everglades, 1907. This is Seminole Indians from 1910. It says a temporary camp. Okay, you guys can see, very swarthy. A Seminole Elder Woman. All right, I found online. Seminole Warrior, as it says here. This is a colorized version of it. Seminole Woman and Papoose. This is an actual drawing of Billy Bolex. This is Francis Healy Shago, Seminole Chief from the book Pictorial History of Andrew Jackson. You're also going to find a lot of dolls from the 1940s, 50s, 60s that represent Seminole Indians. And this is how they represent them. Most of these dolls, this is what they look like. All right. And this is not a hat. <laughs> a lot of the times they'll say this is a hat. But we're going to see the uh, actual original photos of, of the Seminoles wearing this hairstyle. Another uh, drawing of uh, Billy Bowlegs and another Seminole Indian. Notice the turbans they got on with the feathers. Here we have a group of Seminole Indians. On the left, we have Seminole Maroon Scout Charles Daniels in uniform with his wife, Mary, and daughter, Tina, courtesy Jerry Daniels, the University of Texas Institute of Texan Cultures of San Antonio. On the right, we have a group of Seminole Indians with a so-called white man. This is an image of John Horse or Juan Cavallo. Yes, I've actually found out that he was actually called Juan Cavallo. And Cavallo is a real last name in Portugal and Spain, guys. There's many accounts that have saying that he's mixed with Hispanic and so-called African, right? They just add in the African because he's so-called black. But touch the hijack. Here in the middle, we got Deaconess Battle with Seminole women, Mary Osceola Huff and Fanny uh, Stewart, all right? Stewart, right? Just like King James. We got a Seminole Indian chief here, Tom Tiger, 1913. Uh, On the right, we have Seminole women in 1913. On the left, we have Seminole man, a woman and a child from 1910. On the left here, we have two Seminole men again. All right, you guys can see very swarthy. Seminole women, the Everglades, Florida, 1907. This here, the last of the Seminole Negro Indian scouts. Young Seminole women and cameraman holding photographs, the Everglades, 1907. All right. Seminoles. On the right here, we have Charlie Cypress holding a rifle and Charlie Cypress Jr., Seminole Indians. So these other people I'm not mentioning, they're from other tribes. If you guys can pause it and read and look, take a look here. In the left, we have Seminole Man, Dixie Boat Landing, the Everglades, Florida, 1907. Over here on the left, we also have a Seminole Indian sitting in a wheelchair, Charlie Dixie Camp, Florida. All right. You guys see that? Here in the middle, we have a very uh, popular image on the internet. This is Diana Fletcher. Her dad was a runaway, supposedly uh, indentured servant. Her mom was a Seminole. She was later raised by Kiowa, the Kiowa tribe. It says here, Seminole Negro Indian Scouts, 1889, courtesy of the New York Library's Schumburg Center for Research in Black Culture, so-called black. We're gonna see it, what Osceola has to say about being called black. And again, we got Deaconess Harriet Mary Bedell with Seminole Indian Women and Seminole Child, 1933. All right. I just want to ask you again, do you remember who you are? Huh? Over here in the left, we have Jimmy Tiger, Seminole Indian. Another Seminole Indian uh, woman. Here is a colorized picture. In the middle, we have Chief Tallahassee, Seminole. All right. Here in the middle, we have Seminole Indian Scouts, Captain Faye, Julie, and Private William Shields, late 1890s. The two served as scouts for the armies for more than 20 years, all right? Here in the left, we have Seminole Indian Family, 1910. Right here says Frank Brown and the wife of George Osceola, 
seated near Cookin Fire, Miami, John Tiger's Camp, the Everglades, Florida, 1910, all right? A descendant of Osceola, that's his wife. On the left, we have Billy Bowlegs the third, and family members, Seminole Indians, Florida. Over here on the right, we have a Seminole woman. She don't look too happy about this picture. <laughs> and over here, we have a Seminole woman at her house in the Florida Everglades, early 1900s, okay? You see that? She's just standing outside her door. And here on the right, we have a Seminole girl, the Everglades, Florida, 1907. We saw already a couple of images of her. And over here on the right, we have Ingram Billy and Stee Motley with their grandchildren, Seminoles. Okay? That's grandma. And you see what they look like? Well, that's grandma. Over here in the middle, we have two Seminole uh, women. All the way to the right, we have Little Tiger, a Seminole uh, Indian, you know, so swarthy. And again, three Seminole young women at the Everglades, Florida, over here on the right. In this picture right here, we have an Apache chief, Costelitos, with wife Teresita. And over here on the right, it says an identified black Seminole woman. That's what the image said when I found it. Here we have a Seminole woman uh, in the right over here from 1907. Again, do you remember who you are? Over in the right here, we have Lucy Pierce and Billy Bolex, Seminole Indians, all right? Seminole Indians. Over in the left, we have a Seminole girl. All right, very good quality picture, as you guys can see. And over here, another picture of Billy Bolex, the one they use in the cover of that book. All right, Seminole. Here in the middle, we got Black Seminoles, David Poole and Billy Jim. All right, do you remember who you are? Seminole indigenous women, all right? You see the hair? That's what I was saying. It's not hats all the time, it's their actual hair. Over on the left, we have Seminole boy and a girl, all right? Over on the right, we have Seminole woman. It says Evergreen, but they probably meant Everglades. So a 1907, right? Smoking her tobacco blunt. <laughs> and a Seminole squaw, all right? We saw this picture already. I just wanted to show those pictures again, just to remind everybody what the Seminoles look like. Here's a Seminole doll. It says from vintage from the 1960s. This is on Etsy. Got another one right here. All right, again, this is from the 1950s. This is how they portray the Seminole Indians. Over on this website, srbuchitribe.org, says here the Savannah River Band, Yuchi Indian Tribe, and it's listing John Horse here, as we saw earlier, also known as Juan Cavallo or Juan Cavallo. Again, Cavallo is a real surname, which means a horse dealer or from Cavaliere, meaning a horseman, rider, or knight from Italy and Spain. But where are they getting their last names from? You know, a lot of these people, again, do have black Europeans in them. It says here that John or Juan was a seminal Hispanic, African-American, dodged a hijack. They're just saying that because he's dark-skinned, who acted as a military advisor to the chief Osceola and a leader of black seminal units against United States troops during the Seminole Wars in Florida. But what I wanted to show here is actually says here, John Hoare's grandson, Doe Warrior, with family and friends. And I believe it's uh, this one right here with the hat. Take a good look at everybody. All Seminole Indians. Another close-up, all right? Here's your Seminole Indians. And here goes the descendant of John Horse, right in the middle. And I want to tell you something, guys. You probably won't believe me, but he looks like my grandfather. That's what my grandfather looks like. Like he has a nose, the kind of complexion, reddish, brown, you know, copper. My grandfather wore the same exact hat and clothing. I got that same nose. <laughs> yeah, my nose sticks out like that. Another image here. Again, we're just looking at Seminole Indians. All right. Again, a descendant of John Horse right here in the middle, guys. Descendant of John Horse. And again, the whole family, the whole tribe. All right, so we go to page 376 uh, in this Harper Weekly's uh, edition from June 12, 1858. It's an article talking about Billy Bolex and who he is and stuff. So over here to the right uh, in this paragraph, they're talking about the Treaty of Payne's Landing, which was made on 9th of May, 1832. The Seminoles refused to sanction this proceeding of a few of their chiefs 
The delegation themselves denied their own act and declared that they had not signed any paper which required them to relinquish their lands or remove from Florida. They were sure that they would nevertheless be forced to carry out the treaty. Mikanope, old and inert, was little more than a tool in the hands of the bold and crafty half-breed Osceola. All right, now they're saying he's mixed, who though not a chief himself, exerted a controlling influence. The Indians resolved to negotiate, gain time to place their wives and children in safety, secure their crops and lay in ammunition, but in no case to leave the country. They showed themselves adepts in the arts of diplomacy and succeeded in putting off any decided action till the spring of 1835. A council was then held. Osceola and eight others agreed to abide by the treaty and the opening of the next year was fixed upon as the time when the removal should commence. Micanopy, Sam Jones, and three other leading chiefs refused to agree to this. General Thompson, the Indian agent, therefore struck their names off from the role of chiefs, declaring them to be no longer counselors of the nations. Nothing was farther from the intention of Osceola than to fulfill his agreement to emigrate. Why would he want to emigrate? He wished to gain time and above all things by a display of friendship to procure arms and lead. Thompson refused to sell these. Osceola, for a moment forgetting himself, broke out into a fierce passion. Listen to what he's going to say, guys. Am I a Negro? He said. A slave? I am an Indian. The white man shall not make me black. Don't make me black. Why would they make him black if he didn't look dark-skinned? Why would they call him a Negro? Why would they call him a slave? I thought only Africans were the slaves. You guys understand what he's saying here? This is deep. Again, am I a Negro? He said, a slave? I am an Indian. The white man shall not make me black. I will make the white man red with blood and then blacken him in the sun and rain where the wolves shall smell his bones and the vulture live upon his flesh. It's actually a pretty long article, guys. So I'm going to stop right there. What I wanted to point out is what he was asking them. Again, am I a Negro? He said, a slave? No, he's saying, I am an Indian. The white man shall not make me black. Don't let people make you black, guys. Osceola is telling you, I'm not black. So-called black, that's a crayon color. But let's not forget the struggle of Osceola and his people and what he told them. I am not black. And everyone out there listening, you are not black either. That's a crayon color. Do your genealogy. It's bigger than just complexion. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This was a quick video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is a major drop. Why would he say, you ain't going to make me black? So they were making Indians black, right? He's letting them know, you ain't making me black because they were doing it. About 200 years later, now you African-American. Pura vida, mi gente. Thanks for tuning in. Much love and respect. Awah!